This is exactly where you can start making a difference. This news article. You can check out the link in the description box and email these authors. When I seen this so-called story, and it, it's great for the victims' families that it's finally been solved, but they have to mention the place where it happened is now the Hells Angels Las Vegas headquarters. Usually I give a big intro and stuff like that to the show, but not today. Because that is blazingly, blazingly what they were trying to point to because they know there is a trial about to begin in Las Vegas against the Hells Angels. And you're saying, what the hell are you talking about, Hollywood? There was a cold case. Unfortunate. A woman was killed. And where it happened, they finally got the guy who did it. And where they got where it happened now happens to be the clubhouse. But they had to make sure they put it in there. See, media works in a way where, how can I say, it puts stuff in the back of your mind and you don't even realize it. It's only one quick sentence, but that one quick sentence can tie the club to something like this. Unsuspecting readers, that's what they're going to get out of it because we all know that a lot of people don't take the time to research what's going on in an article. What's got my panties all in a bind, you say? This out of Las Vegas Review Journal. Again, link in the description box. Take time to write these people. Man arrested after 40 years in slain of a Las Vegas woman. Our thoughts go out to the family. This by Brett Clarkson and Sabrina Schooner of the Las Vegas Journal, or Las Vegas Review Journal, whatever they want to go. Now, check out how hideous this was. And you'll know why I'm kind of upset about them putting the club's name in here. More than four decades... The homicide of Sandra Renee DeFelice in her Las Vegas home remained unsolved. It was a lot worse there, but I ain't saying it on the air like that. You got to give some kind of uh, respect to the victim here, even though they want to do and make their money off of it. Monday, uh, police said 64-year-old Las Vegas man has been arrested in connection with the December 26th 1980 slaying. I'm going to skip down here. I'm going to skip down, then I'm going to come back up. And you'll see how people, if they were skimming this article, like I just moved back and forth before covering it, would see this. The house in which De Fleecy was killed at 1505 East Bonanza is now the Las Vegas headquarters of the Hells Angels. That's the only place where the club is mentioned. Again, if you were skimming through it, unsuspecting citizen, what would you have got from that? Oh, wait a second. It's headquarters to the Hells Angels. That's what people would have thought. If I wasn't pointing it out. That one sentence right there. And they know. A trial is about to start. See how a jury can be tainted. What if a, jur a potential juror is looking at this story. Oh wait a second. That happened at the Las Vegas headquarters of the Hells Angels. That's what they're thinking. They tainted a jury pool against those that are going to be facing trial in Las Vegas. 
now going back up. Paul Nuttall was taken into custody at his Northwest Valley home, said Metro Homicide uh, Section Lieutenant John or Lieutenant Jason Johansson in a news briefing announcing the arrest. Mind you, this happened in 1980, so this is going to be a big uh, story because of the cold cases that are being solved now. Quote, after Paul Nuttall was taken into custody, my cold case investigators had the pleasure of making the one phone call that every cold case detective wants to make. That call was to the slain woman's daughter, who was three years old when her mother was killed. Now in her 40s, the Fleechy's daughter spurred the developments that led to the arrest by calling cold take, uh, case detectives in 2021 to ask for an update. When detectives looked over the case again, they realized that evidence found under the Fleechy's fingernails should be tested for DNA. The test results led to Nuttall, Johansson said. Great stuff for the family getting this solved. By no means do I want to take that away from them. I'm talking about the article itself. Quote, I am hopeful that in some way, shape, or form, this provides some sort of closure for the family and ultimately the results in some type of closure and justice for Sand uh, Sandra Johansson. Here it is right here. So you get per, per, uh, past the first part. Then you go and hear this if you're a potential juror in that case against them guys in the club. A 1983 review journal story remembered the killing as, quote, one of the most savage homicides in Las Vegas history. Again, a 1983 review journal story remembered the killing as, quote, one of the most savage homicides in Las Vegas history. So you're reading this story, and then, oops, you go back down. The house in which De Fleece, uh, De was killed was at 1505 East Bonanza is now the Las Vegas headquarters of the Hells Angels. I am so hoping that people that are watching this right now goes into the description box, clicks the link, and emails these authors and tell them that the Hells Angels had nothing whatsoever to do with this savage homicide and that it should be corrected that they, you had no intention of making it seem like they did it. One thing I could uh, actually agree with in Australia, because I get contacted a lot by, depending who's, uh, you know, the prosecution defendant, they got a law out there where you can't poison a jury pool. Meaning anything article-wise that could hurt them has to be taken down. It's one of their country's laws. And in a situation like this, it would really go far. Let me tell you, it would really, really go far. Because mentioning them just by the one sentence and making it seem like they're connected to this guy is going to hurt. It's going to hurt. Because you're tainting the jury pool and you have to wonder, is it on purpose? Are you? It might be the case that it is their headquarters or whatever they call it. It might be the case. But at the same time, it doesn't need to be mentioned because they had nothing to do with it. It was one of them deals where they just slip it right under the radar. And they know a lot of people ain't going to read the whole damn article. They're going to skim it like I showed you. They're going to read a couple uh, uh, paragraphs. They're going to go down, get the gist of it. Oh, wait a second. That was the Hells Angels Clubhouse? They're not going to put two and two together. That was 40 years ago. Because, again, people really don't take the time to look at an article. 
do research. They don't do it. And they know that. It's unbelievable what some people will do in this country to get a conviction. We see that all the time out of prosecutors, out of law enforcement agencies, but to have media working hand in hand with them, come on, you're supposed to keep government honest. Boy, we know that ain't the truth. And if it don't fit your narrative, you want to take anybody and everybody down that don't agree with you. So everybody, write that author, man. Write those uh, authors of that piece and tell them, put out a correction, man. They weren't involved in this. There's no reason for them to be in it. Anyway, we're going to go to the second half of the show right now with uh, China Dow coming up right after this. Music break. Stay tuned for the second half of this show, Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem. China Dow's coming in the studio right now. Rock on. 